welcome to this video presentation about industrial ecology and integrated assessment models, published as perspective in nature climate change. Sustainable development needs many different strategies to function. We need economic incentives, regulations, new products and technologies, and lifestyle changes. And all of these strategies somehow need to work together to transform the metabolism of our society to a more sustainable state. But since we have only one Earth to experiment with, we need some kind of test field to study and to test the impact of different strategies before we implement them. Integrated assessment models are the most important test field that we have. These models produce scenarios for climate change mitigation and the main outcome is what we call the scenario trumpet that you see here in this graph, where each of the many lines represents a single scenario with a specific technology mix, carbon tax, and other political instruments. The question is, how robust are these scenarios? How much detail is in there? How much can we trust whether the technology mix in those scenario will actually lead to the outcome envisioned by the model, and therefore we need to review those models. When reviewing integrated assessment models, we first have to become familiar with their overall structure. A central feature of integrated assessment models is their comprehensive coverage of the global socio-ecological system. We have in those models a description of societies by a physical basis with a traditional focus on the energy system. We also have modules for the different environmental mechanisms, including the natural vegetation, the climate system, and abiotic resources. And these models are driven by a macroeconomic module that links the services provided by society's metabolism to the needs of the population. And you can imagine that with such a comprehensive coverage, those models need to make gross simplifications of individual aspects to be able to run as a whole. And the question is then, with all those simplifications, necessary simplifications in those models, what insights from more specialized research fields like industrial ecology can help to improve integrated assessment models? Industrial ecologists study how the industrial system can become more sustainable. There is an overlap between industrial ecology and integrated assessment models because both describe the industrial system and society's biophysical basis. Hence, this overlap is the starting point of our review. What we first did is to take the core industrial ecology methods like life cycle assessment and material flow analysis and ask ourselves what are the modeling principles like market balance, mass balance, and vintage tracking, and how are those modeling principles reflected in integrated assessment models. More importantly, we looked at the linkages in society's biophysical basis that are studied by the different industrial ecology methods and that are central to the, uh, understanding the sustainable development strategies better. And those linkages are global supply chains, so the link between remote, research, remote resource extraction, production and consumption, the link between service, capital stock and flow. For example, when I want to drive a car, I need a car in the stock and somebody else need to produce the car. So there needs to be material flow at some point. Then we have material cycles, the linkages between resource extraction, manufacturing, use and recycling. We have the co-production and by-production, for example, generation of scrap, waste, or combined heat and power generation. And we have the link between the urban fabric, like the road network, and consumption pattern, like energy demand for transport. We now looked at five of the major integrated assessment models and investigated how the industrial ecology linkages and modeling principles are reflected in those models. And the detailed findings you can read in the paper. And here we just have a quick overview of the results. Global supply chains are either incomplete due to missing capital linkages or they are very aggregated. The service capital flow linkages are well covered, but only for energy conversion assets and transportation devices. They are not covered for buildings, for example. 
Material cycles and recycling activities are almost completely absent in integrated assessment models. The only exception is a model of the steel cycle in the image model. For co-production, most models cover combined heat and power in electricity generation, but other types of waste generation or scrap generation are hardly ever covered. The linkage between urban fabric and consumption patterns in cities is not considered by any of the models. We have now a qualitative evidence that there is a difference in the coverage of system linkages between industrial ecology and integrated assessor models. This has mainly historical reasons, but now we see that there is a potential for better integration. The next step that we need to take is we need to have quantitative evidence that integrating such system linkages actually matters and is important to create more robust policy advice from the scenarios generated by integrated assessment models. And here we provide a sketch how this integration could look like. At the core of the model needs to be a detailed description of society's biophysical basis. We need to have a detailed industry module covering material cycles, covering waste generation and global supply chains. And this module needs to be embedded into the wider framework of the global socio-ecological systems with the detailed descriptions of the environmental mechanisms and of course also of the macroeconomic mechanisms that link industrial activities to human well-being. And we hope that with the debate triggered by this work, we can proceed faster in the future with integrating the knowledge of the two disciplines. You can access the paper via the link below and there is also a free access read-only version for your convenience. Thank you.